Okay, I've got this assembly, start from rest, reaches an angular speed of 150 RPM uh, by pulling with 20 newtons down here. So this is 20 newtons uh, right there um, for how many seconds? Basically what I'm trying to find, right? I've got four spheres, three, okay. So again, I'm going to essentially use the, you know, sum of the RMVs okay, uh, plus the sum of the MDTs equals the sum of the RMV2, and that equals 1, right? So, again, initially this is going to go to 0, right, because it starts from rest, okay? Let's talk about the moments being applied here, right? So, obviously, I've got the, the 20T, right? So, again, that 20 is at a distance of 0.1 away, so that's going to be plus, and we'll assume it's in the positive. We'll define that as the positive direction. So it's going to be plus 0.1 times 20 times however much time that I've got. Okay. Now, you might think to yourself, well, that's you know, I've also that there's other forces, right? I, so I've got these other forces due to the uh, masses here. The diff, I, I can neglect these. Why can I neglect them? Because, for example, if I look at, you know, uh, this ball, it has a equal and opposite moment over on the other side. And no matter what position these are in, there's always going to be one opposite acting in the other direction, right? So the sum of all of those are always going to cancel out because there's always, be, due to symmetry, there's always going to be a ball over on the other side with a gravity that's acting against it, right? One's going to be a positive creating a positive moment, the other is going to be creating a negative moment. So they all go away, so that's what we've got here, okay? So uh, the only external force, yes, gravity is there, but they're, they're always canceling each other out due to symmetry, okay? So the only external uh, moment that I have is that tension pulling on the pulley there. And what that's going to equal is the RMV of all of the, the, the balls, right? So it's going to be 4 times 0.4 times the mass uh, of 3 times the velocity, okay? Well, let's figure out what that final velocity is, actually, right? Because I know it's 150 RPMs, right? So I can take that um, 150 revolutions per minute, right? I can take that times 2 pi radians per revolution, get rid of that, okay? And then I can take that 1 minute divided by 60 seconds, kill that, okay? And I can get that to be 15.7 radians per second, right? So I'm just converting RPMs to radians per second, right? Now. What I know is that, you know, my arc length is basically r times theta, right? Take a time derivative of that. This is basically going to give me my velocity is r times theta dot, because r does not change, right? r is at fixed distance in this situation. So it's just theta dot, where theta dot is what I have there. So essentially what this from this I find that my final velocity is going to be equal to 0.4, which is r times the 15.7 radians per second. So this thing has a velocity of 6.2 h. That's what the velocity of each ball is. And that's how I relate the RPMs to linear velocity is just by that radius r that I have given there. So um, from that, I can just then say, okay, 2t, which is the 0.1 times the 20, equals, and then what I have there is, um, you know, plugging, basically what I'm doing is I'm plugging this in there, okay, and from that I get 30.16, so from that I can find that the time it takes to get up to 150 RPMs, which relates to 6.28 meters per second, Okay. That time takes 15 seconds with pulling on that cord uh, with 20 newtons. Okay. 
So again, angular momentum, initial plus all the external angular impulses or moments times time equals the final angular momentum, okay, to calculate that.